Hi guys, in this video I want to talk about one factor or one way ANOVA. I got a little example here and before we jump into actually doing a one factor ANOVA, let me talk a little bit about the data. So the data as you can see here consists of amounts of calcium measured in average parts per million at three different locations along the Mississippi River and you can see we have these generically named locations P, Q, and R. So we have three locations, three treatments or three groups. These are all more or less synonymous when it comes to one way or one factor ANOVA. So regardless of the text that you're using you'll come across uh, those different terms. Groups, treatments, um, populations, sometimes even they're referred to. Okay, so what we've done, let me talk about the data itself a little more, is we've taken independent random samples from each location and we've ended up with three samples of data. Once again, they're independent and randomly selected. That's a very important point when it comes to one factor ANOVA. In addition to that, we notice that the sample sizes here are all the same and that is exactly six as we can see so we have a sample size of six for each group now or each treatment now it does not have to be all the same but if they are all the same it's called a balanced design and in a balanced design experiment the formulas for the one factor ANOVA become a lot simpler but I'm going to treat this um, tutorial series uh, in a more general fashion. In other words, I want to present to you formulas and techniques that will work regardless of whether it's a balanced design or an unbalanced design. Unbalanced design experiment in this context would mean that the th samples that we have here are not all necessarily the same size. So let's say we had six observations from lo location P, 15 observations from location Q, and 28 observations from location R. The techniques we're going to use are going to be able to handle that scenario and the more specific scenario where we have here where we have the same sample size for each population, from each population I should say. Okay, so let me present to you the hypothesis test that essentially guides a one-factor ANOVA. So the null hypothesis it really says it all. Let me put it in terms of symbols. In our case, we'll be saying mu 1, and by 1 I'm going to be referring to uh, location P equals mu 2 equals mu 3. So of course you know the symbol mu is universally accepted as the population or group mean. Uh, and what this statement is saying, the null hypothesis member, is what we initially assume to be true. It's saying that all the means are equal. But a more subtle way to read that is that they are not significantly different. Okay. Now, the alternative hypothesis can be written in a few different ways. I like this acronym A-L-O-I and that stands for, you should write this down, at least one inequality. So the one factor ANOVA hypothesis test is often referred to as an omnibus test and if you look up the word omnibus it essentially means that we're doing a lot of things in one sweep and so that's really what it's referring to this alternative hypothesis if you think about it can mean a lot of different scenarios depending on how many groups you're comparing and remember in a one factor ANOVA you can compare two or more groups essentially uh, the more groups you have the more possibilities there are for this ALOI Okay, so ALOI could mean that one of these means is different than the others. It could mean that all of them are different than each other. Or it could mean anything in between those two extremes. 
so that's why it's referred to as an omnibus test now if you would like to get more granular detail in the hypothetical event that you reject this null hypothesis and you conclude that ALOI there is a post hoc procedure called a Tukey Kramer procedure which I'm not going to cover here I have in previous tutorial videos you can check that out all right so this is our hypothesis and we're going to have a level of significance we'll choose for now something generic 0.05 typically if you're working on a problem for a course you'll be given a level of significance okay and now we want to proceed with actually coming to a conclusion on this test and essentially performing a one factor ANOVA now in order to do this there's a series of formulas and we're going to need to dis uh, actually crack open the acronym ANOVA and start to understand what it means so ANOVA stands for analysis of variance it's very interesting because if we look at the hypothesis test and everything I said about the hypothesis test it seemed like what we were actually doing was comparing means so why is the technique called analyzing variances well because well you're gonna have to put a pin in that for now let me dissect this a little further and it, truth will reveal itself okay so in the analysis of variance ANOVA takes the total sum of squares which is abbreviated with this acronym capital SST total sum of squares and I'll give you a formula for this eventually into two parts into sum of squares caused by the treatments and remember these are the groups so for us the locations plus the sum of squares due to error an error is you could think of as inherent variability in any numerical variable that you were to collect data on you could almost you could also think of sum of squared error as a source of variation that comes from within the groups and you could think of the sum of squares treatment as a source of variation that's coming from between the groups and the sum of squares total as a more crude measure of variation which is overall considering the entire data as if it came from one source now in this dissection you see it's quite simple arithmetic but in order to get these two components we do, we do need a, a, a couple formulas that are probably the scariest part of a one-factor ANOVA so let me give you those formulas and let's get those out of the way so we'll start with sum of square total so it's going to involve some double summations but bear with me I'll explain what's going on here so these are two capital sigmas right and the bounds here are going to be from 1 to K I'll explain what I mean by K in a moment and J from 1 to N subscript I okay now we're going to do Y I J minus Y bar dot dot and we're going to square those differences and then sum them all up so what this essentially says is that I'm going to take each particular value so y11 one, one, that this right here would be y11 one, one. it's from group 1 observation 1 so you could think of this 1 1 2 3 and this is one, two, three, two, 6 all right it's a way these subscripts are a way of referencing particular values so i'm going to take one by one i'm going to take each value and subtract y bar dot dot well what is y bar dot dot y bar dot dot 
is the grand mean. It's the mean of all the observations. So it's as if you were to sum them all up. Well, let me do this without um, introducing more formulas. It's quite a simple concept. It's the grand mean. It's the average of all the values as if they came from one source. So average all these guys. That would be y bar dot dot. So you're going to take each value and subtract y bar dot dot. And that's what these summations are telling us. OK? Next, sum of squares from treatment. Now this, the goal of this is to see how much of the variation, remember this is analysis of variance, right? And the title of this technique is ANOVA. So what we're interested here is how much of the variance is coming from between the groups. So this is between group variability. Okay, so the way we measure this is we get the mean from each group. That's what this is. So there will be a mean for this group. That will be y bar subscript 1 dot. There will be the mean for this group. That would be y bar 2 dot, etc. And from each of those, we're going to subtract the grand mean that we learned before. Remember, that was the mean of all of the observations. Now, um, sorry, I did not tell you what K stands for. K is just the number of groups or treatments. Number of treatments. So for us, K is going to be 3. Right? Because we have 3 groups or treatments. Okay? So what SS treatment does, or sum of squares from treatment does, is it? it's a way to measure the variability between the groups. So how much of the total variability, how much of SST is coming from between the groups? Okay, as opposed to, and now we get to the last member, SS East, error sum of squares, which measures how much variability is coming from within the groups. So sometimes you could think of this as within group variability. And the way we measure this is we're going to use those same double summations that we had before. 1 to k. k for us is 3 in this example, remember. j going from 1 to n subscript i. By the way, n subscript 1 in this case would be the number of observations in group 1. So that would be 6. n subscript 2 would be, in this case it's the same. It's a balanced design. So this will also be 6. But if it was 7, these formulas can handle that. n subscript th uh, 3 would be the number of observations from group 3, okay, etc. And here we're going to take each observation individually and subtract its respective mean, its respective group mean. So you see that's slightly different than the previous two. Okay, so we're going to take 42 and subtract the average of its group, 37. At minus the average of its group, of course, squared. And then we do that for the next group, and the next group, and we sum all that up, and this is a way to measure how much variability is coming from within the groups. Okay? Now, watch part two, because in part two, I'm going to move forward with a couple more formulas. These were actually the ugliest ones, so if you got through these, the what's coming downstream is actually going to be a relief and things are going to get a lot simpler and come together. So uh, be sure to tune in to part two of this series.